Hi boys and girls, welcome back to another week of STEAM lessons. This week is called Cool It, and we're gonna be talking about things that are really cold, but mostly we're gonna be talking about how energy is transferred. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna read this book called One Winter's Day. One Winter's Day, written by M. Christina Butler, illustrated by Tina McNaughton. Little Hedgehog was making his bed for the winter when a sudden gust of wind blew him off his feet. It took hold of his cozy nest and tossed it high into the air. Little Hedgehog trembled as the wind whistled around him, and he wondered what to do. He caught hold of his scarf, hat, and mittens before they blew away and tried to find shelter under the tree roots. But wherever he went, the wind blew there as well. I'll have to stay with Badger until this storm has gone, he said at last, pulling his woolly hat firmly over his prickles. Then he snuggled into his cozy scarf, put on his mittens, and with a deep breath, he set off. The wind was even stronger in the meadow. Leaves swirled here and there, and snowflakes filled the air. Little Hedgehog hadn't gone far when he bumped into a family of field mice shivering in the long grass. I've never known such a storm, squeaked Mother Mouse. The wind has blown our nest far away and my poor babies are so cold. My home has been blown away as well, said Little Hedgehog. I'm on my way to stay with Badger, but I have just the thing to warm you up. And he took off his woolly hat and gave it to the mice. Oh, lovely, lovely, they squeaked, snuggling down out of the wind. Thank you, Little Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog tucked his nose inside his scarf and ran along beside the racing river. Otter was on the bank, huffing and puffing on his paws. Hello, Otter, shouted Little Hedgehog. What are you doing? Oh, hello, Hedgehog, replied Otter. My fur coat keeps me warm, but my paws are freezing. Here, have these, said Little Hedgehog, giving Otter his mittens. They should do the trick. Oh, thank you, little hedgehog, said Otter. These are great, but shouldn't you be at home in this cold weather? I have no home anymore, little hedgehog replied sadly. The wind has blown it away, and running on, he cried, I'm going to go stay with Badger. By the time little hedgehog reached the woods, the snow was getting deeper. On and on he struggled, picking his way between the snowdrifts as the wind howled around him. A mother deer and her fawn were sheltering in the bushes. Oh, little hedgehog, why aren't you in your nest in this awful storm? she asked. So little hedgehog told mother deer about his nest blowing away. But as he spoke, he saw that the little fawn was shaking with cold. Here, take this, he said, giving the fawn his scarf. How kind you are, said Mother Deer. Thank you, Little Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog pattered on faster and faster, but just as he finally saw Badger's house at the bottom of the hill, he skidded on the icy path. Help, he cried as he went bumping and bouncing through the snow. Badger was making tea when he heard a big thud outside. Whatever was that, he cried, dropping his toast. When he opened the door, a prickly snowball rolled in. Gracious me, he said in surprise. It's Little Hedgehog. Badger carried Little Hedgehog to an armchair by the fire and gave him a cup of tea. Little Hedgehog told Badger about his journey through the storm. And then, cozy and warm, he fell fast asleep. Little Hedgehog stayed with Badger until the storm had gone. As they walked to where his house had been, Little Hedgehog was very worried. How can I build a strong new nest if all the leaves and twigs have blown away and there's nothing left? He asked anxiously. I'll help you, said Badger kindly. We're nearly there now. Surprise! came the cry when they turned the corner. Little Hedgehog gasped with delight. The animals he'd met in the storm had made him the coziest nest he had ever seen. For the kindest hedgehog in the world, they all cried together. In this story, we read about sweet little hedgehog who gives his warm winter clothes to different animals to help keep them warm. We're going to talk this week all about why things like hats, 
and scarves and mittens keep us warm and what that means for the energy that we have. When I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about the heat that we have in our body and the heat that we use for all sorts of things in our world. So we have some different ways of transferring heat from one object to another. The first is conduction. Conduction is when heat is passed through an object. So just like when you turn a stove burner on, it gets really hot. When you put the pot on top of that stove burner, it can make whatever is inside really hot. It's transferring the heat. The next is convection. So that's when heat is passed through liquid. So if we have a really hot liquid, like a liquid in our pot that is boiling and we put noodles in, that heat is transferred to the noodles in the pot. The final type of energy transference is radiation. And radiation is, of course, something that we hear about um, for objects that aren't really safe to touch or to handle, but radiation just means that heat is transferred through electromagnetic waves instead of through an object or through a liquid. So for example, the heat that comes from the sun is transferred to us through electromagnetic waves instead of through a physical object or through a liquid. We are gonna test the different types of energy transference today with a really fun project called Penguin Rescue. So I have a block of ice with a poor little penguin trapped inside. I wanna try and rescue this penguin. Now, of course, if I were just to leave this ice out in my yard and let the sun shine down on it, that radiation energy transference would melt the ice and I would be able to rescue my penguin. But I'm a little worried about him in there and so I wanna rescue him as fast as I can. So I'm gonna use some different objects to help me melt the ice faster. I have some sponges, I have water, and I have salt. So I'm gonna try each of these on my block of ice and see what happens. The first type of energy transference I'm gonna use is conduction. Remember that's passing energy using objects. So I'm just going to use my sponge and I'm gonna rub on the ice and see what happens. So I'm actually, it's probably hard to see on the camera, but I'm making a little divot here that is smoother than the rest of the ice and I can tell that I am making it through to that little penguin. Next, I'm gonna try my salt. So salt actually has a really cool reaction. It makes a chemical reaction. So I'm gonna pour my salt onto the penguin, and then I'm gonna come back in with my sponge. So now I'm using two different objects. Oh, and that's really making a big difference. So I'm gonna get my salt in there. And one thing I can feel is my finger is getting really cold where I'm rubbing. So that heat that I'm transferring with conduction is also transferring some of that coolness back to my finger. Next, I'm gonna try water. So this would be convection, it's liquid. So I'm gonna spray this water onto my penguin. And I don't know if you can tell this, but I can definitely tell that I'm getting closer to rescuing him. I have almost rescued my penguin. I'm gonna work a little bit harder on him and see if I can get him out. But before I do that, I wanna give you your challenge. Your challenge this week is to find a small plastic object. If you have a little plastic toy, that works great, but make sure it's something that's plastic. And I want you to put it in a container with some water and put it in the freezer. Once it's frozen solid, I want you to try out these different methods of energy transference and rescue whatever object you put in there. You can make this into a contest by freezing some objects in different containers and setting a timer to see how fast you can get it out or by having someone else race against you and seeing who can get theirs out the fastest. It's really fun. I, I don't know, I think I might've set a new record, but I've got to finish rescuing this penguin first. So I will see you next time.